citizens speak out. People in countries across the globe continue to demand greater participation in government, as well as improved job opportunities and other basic freedoms. As a protest in the streets of Bahrain, Burkina Faso, Italy, Israel, Libya, Nigeria, Oman, Sudan, Syria, Turkey, and Yemen. In the Darfur region of Sudan, gatherings were quickly quelled by police as small numbers of youths gathered in three cities to protest a lack of freedom and the government's killing of innocent citizens. Burkina Faso's newly appointed Prime Minister, Luke Adolfo pledged to create an inclusive government to help resolve the recent crisis of protests, sparked by high costs as well as a military mutiny that resulted in citizen outrage after soldiers looted stores. In Oman, 234 people who had been arrested during protests over the past weeks received a pardon from Sultan Qaboos bin Said on Wednesday, April 20th, and were freed. 47 Israeli intellectuals, including 16 recipients of the Israel Prize, the country's highest civilian honor, call for their nation to completely halt occupation of Palestinian territories in recognition of an independent state based on the 1967 borders. The group also supports Palestine's campaign to be recognized by the United Nations if peace talks do not progress with Israel. In Turkey, ethnic Kurds continued protests on Wednesday after 12 Kurdish political candidates were banned from running in June national elections, with one activist killed when police opened fire. Completing a two-day visit with representatives from the Bahraini government and members of civil society, U.S. Assistant Secretary of State Jeff Feltman voiced support for the protesters as he also called for the government to respect universal human rights and to address the legitimate demands of the Bahraini people to achieve reconciliation and reform through dialogue. European Parliament President Yerzy Buzek called for an investigation into reports of Bahraini government human rights abuses as he spoke out against the deaths of detained activists as well as allegations that they had been subjected to extreme abuse. He pointed out that this kind of approach from the government would harm efforts toward national dialogue. Meanwhile, Zainab al Khawaja, daughter of human rights activist Abdul Hadi al Khawaja, ended her hunger strike after being hospitalized, speaking out at the same time against the silence of governments like the U.S., which have effectively ignored Bahrain's ill treatment of peaceful protesters. UN Children's Fund, or UNICEF, representatives state that 26 children have died during recent unrest in Yemen and call upon both the government and citizens to protect these innocent lives at all costs. As Yemeni President Ali Abdullah Saleh continues to lose support, politicians, top army leaders, religious and tribal leaders have defected, with several top military commanders who began supporting protesters last month and others who left late last week to form a new political party in protest of the government's violence against activists. On Thursday, tribal and religious leaders issued a statement calling for the president to step down within two weeks. Meanwhile, representatives for President Saleh pledged to respond within 24 hours to an updated plan from the Arab Gulf Cooperation Council, which proposes that he transfer power to a deputy within 30 days in exchange for the council's pledge that the president, his family, and aides would be granted immunity from prosecution. Ongoing unrest in Syria, in spite of the government's pledge to end emergency laws, has prompted the British Foreign Office to advise all citizens to arrange flights to leave the country. U.S. President Barack Obama announced plans to donate 25 million U.S. dollars to the Libyan Revolutionary Forces to assist with humanitarian aid to protect civilians and civilian populated areas at risk of coming under attack from government forces. President Obama and British Prime Minister David Cameron also held talks to discuss non-military approaches to secure an agreement from Colonel Muammar Gaddafi to end the attacks on civilians and comply with UN Security Council resolutions. Magarebia News Agency, meanwhile, reports that the number of Libyan police and military officers defecting to Tunisia has increased in recent days. Following reports on Thursday that the UK and France are sending military advisors to consult with revolutionary forces in Benghazi, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov spoke out against starting a ground war in Libya, saying that the military advisors are overstepping their original UN Security Council mandate of protecting civilians. Minister Lavrov observed that in previous situations, the presence of such advisors had been a precursor to ground troops being deployed, resulting in significant casualties on both sides. With sadness for the loss of precious lives and the anguish to innocent youths, we pray that all countries support only peaceful change so that the conflicts may end with dignity, freedom and harmony prevailing among all people. In sorrowful response to these unfortunate world events, Supreme Master Ching Hai lovingly reminds, If the road is wrong, the more we walk on it, the more we go wrong. Any leaders who committed harm to others should stop at once, sincerely repent to God, and act to redeem their mistaken deeds. Then they will be pardoned, even if humans can't forgive. 
Heaven will.